Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Pond Season 2. Today we're going to be finishing up our little backyard pond here in the planter box. Now, if you guys didn't see the first video, I have a link to a playlist that has all the Pond Season 2 videos in it so you can catch up. Originally, this video was going to be about the transformation of this entire space, which is kind of like the first secret, I guess, of Pond Season 2. Now, unfortunately, we had a little bit of a setback with that, and so that's not what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be finishing the pond, though, so it's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to go to the nursery and get a bunch of really awesome pond plants. We're probably going to throw in some aquarium plants, too. We're going to do a little bit of some different stuff, like with the substrate. We're going to get the filter hooked up, and I'm going to show you everything that we're doing for that and how we're going to run this system. Don't worry, the video after this will be of that transformation of this space, and I can't wait to show you guys. It's going to be a lot of work to do that, but it's going to be really, really cool. Our first step here is going to be to drain our pond out. This water's been just stagnant in here for a couple weeks. I'm going to skim all of these flowers from the apple tree out of here. And then we're going to just fill it back up with fresh water. We got the pond drained down, guys. It took a long time just with that siphon, but we're all ready to go now to start putting in our substrate. In the past, I've used really cheap methods to do this, just throwing in some sand, play gravel, whatever. It really just depends on what you want to do at the bottom level of your pond. A lot of people aren't going to be putting aquarium plants on the bottom of their pond, so they don't need to have a soil layer and then, you know, a nice cap of sand or something like that. But you know me, of course we're going to do a bunch of aquarium plants down in here, so we are going to need to use something. Instead of doing soil and sand like I've done before, I'm going to go ahead and do something a little different here. I'm going to use some Brightwell soil. So this is not something that I recommend anybody do just purely from an expense standpoint. I mean, this stuff isn't cheap and it's not something that is going to be required for your pond. You can easily just use soil, put sand or gravel on top and then grow your plants that way. But because I have so many extra bags of this stuff laying around, I figured why not give it a shot? I'm also going to be throwing in a little bit of Brightwell's Florin Base. This is a clay additive to help add iron to the pond and that's something that will probably be important for some of the plants that we end up putting down there. I'm not even going to wash this stuff, just going to pour it in, let it get a little murky, not a big deal. Only used about half a bag down here, just kind of spread it out evenly throughout the bottom. And now we're going to cap it with the soil. So we're just going to dump in about three bags of this stuff. Fighting the sun here a little bit, guys, but we have three bags in. I even put some up on the sides here just to have the ability to play around with planting something in there. There's only about a half an inch on each side there, but I think it could be pretty interesting. I mean, the idea is to have a lot of pond plants sit up here and we don't have a ton of room, but who knows? All right guys, before we fill the pond up, let's talk about filtration a little bit. You might remember from the first video, we have the waterfall over here. It's just an eight inch waterfall type filter. They're pretty common. Just found mine at Lowe's, they're online. They're pretty much everywhere where they sell pond stuff. And they're meant to be part of a waterfall feature, but you can also add filtration to it if you want. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna have a power head that sits in the pond, pumps water up to the waterfall where we're gonna have some media, and then it'll spill over the side. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give us the extra biological filtration that we need that we maybe aren't getting enough of from the plants in our pond. I have a feeling that's not gonna be the case with this pond, but you never know. But also it's gonna to help to oxygenate the water. So there's gonna be a little bit of a drop off there at the level of where the pond water sits and it's gonna to help to not only mix the water but oxygenate it as well. I'm using roughly a thousand gallon per hour power head that's made by Eco Plus. I got it on Amazon and this might be total overkill. I'm not sure. We might dial it back to something half as powerful. We'll just have to wait and see how it works out. I like these power heads because they have threaded inputs and outputs which makes it easy to customize and pretty much do whatever you want. Our output's pretty simple. We just have some three quarter inch pond tubing that we hook into the output and then we run up to the input of the waterfall filter. I can then easily tuck this tubing around the side of the pond and it'll eventually just become invisible. For the input, I use another one of the barb fittings that comes with the pump and I have a one inch piece of tubing that I'm going to plug into that and I also have a cap on the end of this piece. I drilled some holes in the end of this tubing for the water to get sucked in through and then I capped it with one of these large intake sponges from Aquarium Co-op. Finally, the spot is in the shade, guys. While the pond is filling up, I just wanna to touch on the filtration one more time. I mean, 
I don't know if this is going to be adequate for the setup we're doing here. We only have one point of mechanical filtration, that sponge down at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so we'll just have to see what happens and then make changes as time goes on and we learn what this pond is gonna do. I already have an idea for a skimmer attachment for this pump, so that'll probably be the first thing that gets changed if we decide to go that far. And yeah, I mean, the waterfall over there might not really work out. The pump might need to change. We might need to swap that thing out completely for something bigger. I just, I don't know. I'm excited for this pond to finish filling up because once it does, we're gonna get in the car, we're gonna jump over to the local nursery and we're gonna pick up some pond plants. So hurry up, pond. We are back now, guys. I turned the pond off before I left, just got it back on here, so hopefully that fills up soon, but check out the plants. I have all kinds of stuff over here. I am not familiar with pretty much all of these, except for a couple. We have the, the papyrus here in the center, and then like we have this one over here. This is actually Sagittaria. What is that? Latifolia? So this is like a, you know, the opposite of dwarf sag. It's gonna get humongous, a couple feet. You can see some interesting leaf morphology there and then we have this little guy over here can't say that lindarina grandif grandiflora so this is a cool one a little low plant we can't you know be submerging that too much but it's gonna be fun to play around with these plants guys we have this giant one over here this one apparently gets like six feet this one is blurry patent canna so apparently five to seven feet like, oh my gosh. And then we have the cypress over here, the uh, Egyptian paper plant, I believe. And then this one over here is another cypress, cypress longus, three to four feet. So kind of more like a grass, or at least it is now. And then this one's really cool right here. I really like this one. Let's pull this one over. Let's see what we got. This is Rummix something, or Bloody Dock. So. I don't know, two to three feet though. A lot of these plants are, are huge though. They're gonna get big. So what I have, because we only have two ledges over here, like where the water's coming in and then one over here, I got some of these little paver rock kind of things that we can set and kind of build up and then set our plants on. And then that way, uh, we get them up out of the water. This is where last year's pond ended up, guys. And I already went through and pulled out a little bit of dwarf sads, just what was left in here. This smells really bad. It's been just kind of decaying over here in the corner, which wasn't exactly my plan. I should have pulled this stuff out a little bit sooner, but we have a start for the pond this year. We can put it in and it looks like we're getting pretty full. So I'm gonna stand by, wait until that's done. We'll pop these in, we'll pop those in, and then we'll go get some plants from inside, finish this thing up.
Well, here it is guys, version one of the pond. What do you think? If you have any ideas or preferences for plants, let me know down in the comments. I am not an expert here. There are probably a ton of things that I'm not even thinking about. I ended up filling up the filter over here with lava rocks and left our same media sack on top, but you can see that helps fill in things a lot better. And, oh, there goes a couple. But yeah, I think the pump that we're using is gonna work out just fine. Obviously, I used a lot of this random driftwood around the sides of the pond to kind of give it more of a natural look. And I'm liking it so far. I think I'm gonna keep adding more wood to this, but like here's a big piece of spider wood that I have up on the little platform here that this papyrus is on. And I just think it looks really cool to have this stuff come up out of the water. I'm already thinking of something for maybe like a centerpiece. So don't worry, this is not the final product whatsoever, but I wanted to show you guys over here some aquarium plants that I'm thinking about putting in. So here I have some Hygropinatophyta that's you know pretty much right from the farm. I wish I had some extra like kind of small baskets like half the size of this that I could put these in so that way we could get them up out of the water a little bit. But I think for now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop them down into the substrate right below kind of where I have them now. Then I also have some Laguigia Super Red Mini right here. We're gonna do the same thing with it's looking a little leggy but I have some fresh stuff coming in. It should be here in a couple days. And over here we have some Crip Parva that we can mix in with the Dwarf Sag that I already have down here. When we were checking out the pond plants, I forgot to mention that we did get some water hyacinth. That's this guy. And then over here we just have some Sylvinia Minima from inside. I'm not 100% sure how this stuff is gonna do, but um, you know, in the past it hasn't done well. But we'll see, this is a new location and you never know. I almost forgot guys, we gotta dechlorinate our pond and we gotta add some bacteria. So to dechlorinate such a large volume, I'm gonna go with the Fritz Complete instead of the ACCR or the Guard. This stuff also does a lot more than just neutralize the chlorine and chloramine. It's also gonna detoxify your nitrite and your nitrate as well. We're not really using it for that. The main reason why I'm using this is because it's basically a much more concentrated form. One cap full is going to treat 50 gallons, so we only have to put in three or four caps of this versus a lot more of some of the other products. And we also want to get our pond ready to add fish. So here we have a live nitrifying bacteria culture that Fritz makes. This is the Fritz Zyme 7, and we're going to just dump in the whole bottle. Bacteria everywhere. So this is saying to use 120 mils or a half a cup per 10 gallons in a new system. So we should actually be using more than one bottle. I think we're gonna be good in this case. We have plenty of time before we add our fish. There's gonna be nitrifying bacteria hanging out on a lot of these plants in here. So our cycle should be able to get going fairly quickly without having to use a ton of this stuff. But I'm glad we have it. And there we go, guys. Man, do I hate bird netting. This stuff sucks, but you know what, hey. The pond is covered, should be safe from any pond predators that the night may bring, and we can sleep easy. So, I think that's gonna do it, guys, for the second episode of Pond Season 2. And yeah, yeah, the third episode is going to be epic. This whole area here will be transformed, and that's all I'm gonna say. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Hit the notification bell so you know when I upload the next Pond Season video. And if you're interested in supporting the channel and you want to see bonus content on Pond Season stuff, ancient garden stuff, regular fish tank stuff, then consider becoming a member or active over on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. Couldn't do this without you. We'll see you in the next one.